Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 23rd episode of the Cantina Chatter podcast. For Jurassic Park fans and toy collectors, this past week has been all about Mattel's new Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom toy line. On Monday, April 16th, the Fallen Kingdom toy line, which had been officially revealed at New York Toy Fair 2018 back in February, roared to life on toy aisles across the world. But not everyone's experiences were wonderful. Some collectors found everything, while others found nothing. Some stores leaked merchandise before April 16th, while some collectors managed to quote-unquote sneak peek some of the product using BrickSeek and securing product from willing stores. Despite whether or not your April 16th, which I've come to refer to as Jurassic Monday, was as good as you hoped it would be, one thing is for sure. The response to Mattel's new Jurassic World line has been overwhelmingly positive. In this episode, I am joined by my good friends Matt Brando and Sam, Raptor Queen 89 both of whom have previously been on the show, and both of whom I have also had the pleasure of meeting in person. So Matt, you've been on Cantina Chatter once or twice. Welcome back. Oh, yeah. Hello there. Hi. How are you? <laughs> we just can't get rid of this guy. He's always on the show. I, I know. I'll have to die soon. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam, this is your second time on the show, so thank you for being with us today. You're welcome. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so honored to be in the presence of Sam Raptor. <laughs> This is going to be a long conversation, I can already tell. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Bring it on. Let's do it, girls. (laughs) So I'm going to divide this conversation into two parts. Uh, First, I'd like to discuss our experiences toy hunting for the product, not only on Jurassic Monday, but also leading up to the 16th and in the days since then. Uh, Secondly, I'd like to discuss our reactions to the quality of the product itself and how well we have been enjoying it. So... There have been many reports of leaks and videos that had been popping up on YouTube of people finding Fallen Kingdom merchandise in the weeks before the 16th. Uh, Matt, you had been live blogging your experiences uh, in the week leading up to Jurassic Monday, and I'm sure many of our listeners have been following you on YouTube and social media, but tell us a little bit about your experiences leading up to the 16th. Well, I think just like everybody else, I was seeing some, uh, I guess, promotional packages by people, either that or... Um, people were buying things early from eBay, whether it's a China based, and this is happens with all, I mean, you guys know, well, especially you, Victoria, because we do this pretty much for a living. Um, people will just buy from China early just to be first to get the views and the money and blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah. Um, I, I'm not a supporter of that at all. I think that's really stupid and it's, it'll, it'll all in turn, turn into half-assed, uh, videos. So I, I really do believe in like waiting and I tried to wait, but like I found just, um, in the stores, the second, this is all documented on my channel. So I don't know if I get the dates wrong, just go to my channel. Um, I think the second I found the gyrosphere blast vehicle, cause there's nothing else to buy Jurassic worldwide. Plus Toys R Us is closing early. So they just throw the crap out from the, you know, the, when they get it from the truck, I guess. So I was lucky there. Then, like, two days later, I found the RC gyrosphere, which is pretty cool. Um, and that was just thrown out because I was at a Toys R Us. I did cheat a little bit for um, to find a thrash and throw early because I that was the thing I was looking most forward to. And I got the Legacy Jeep and an Alan Grant because I, I knew that Legacy Jeep was probably going to be sold out. And I also wanted that because it looked cool. But besides that, I didn't cheat at all. I just randomly found uh, Friday the 13th. I found a bunch of stuff, and I bought it because... No one else was there buying it. I was like, "This is for me. I'm doing this right now." Um, and then uh, waited till you know the release day, midnight, the fifteenth at Walmart's, and I got pretty much everything else I wanted besides some more vehicles that I've left on my checklist. But for the most part, I was pretty fortunate and uh, got a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know, I totally agree with your point about a lot of people, especially on YouTube, uh, do make a habit of you know eBaying things early or paying a premium on top of things just to be first. And uh, yeah, they do have the views, but a lot of the time when you watch the the videos, um, it's not quite the re- kind of review you would expect or the kind of review that necessarily will inform you as to uh, what the exact nature of the and quality and you know detail about the product is. Uh, so I'm glad you bring that up. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it sounds like you did really well leading up to, I was going to say Force Friday once again, leading <laughs> up to Jurassic Monday. Um, So that's pretty cool. Uh, Now, Sam, you were also on the hunt shortly before the big day. What was your experience trying to find these new toys? Oh, there was absolutely nothing. Um, You know, any time before the 16th, 
and I I was hunting around a couple of days before. Uh, my sister rung up stores. I think we have a local warehouse. I think it's a little bit like um, Walmart, maybe. It just pretty much stocks everything. And uh, she had rung up on, I think, the 16th and said, have you got them in stock? And they said, yeah, but we can't sell them for a couple more days. Um, so I had to wait till Wednesday. But uh, I think my sister and I were first in there Wednesday morning, and we pretty much found... Uh, everything we wanted to yeah it was fantastic um so the weights i was kind of getting uh, the anticipation was building because i saw you know you guys finding stuff and everyone in the states finding stuff and but i only had to wait a couple more days um so it was still really exciting yeah very nice yeah uh myself uh, going into uh walmart i think this is probably uh maybe a couple weeks before the 16th uh, the first thing that I found was actually the little blind bag dinosaurs. I found those at a Walmart and uh, they had a couple cases of them and uh, I was feeling around for them. I was trying to find the Stegosaurus, of course, but I ended up with Stiggy Moloch, which, you know, all good. <laughs> I was spending a new Jurassic toy early, so not really complaining there. Uh, and then uh, it was a couple of days after that I went to Toys R Us. Uh, like you, Matt, I also found the uh, radio-controlled gyrosphere. Mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason, it seems like people were finding that at Toys R Us, right? Uh, which was cu quite interesting since Toys R Us uh, here in the U.S. is is closing shop. Um, so that was a that was my first real, I guess, you, if you want to consider like an actual like mainline product purchase was that, and uh, then uh, the DPCI numbers for Target showed up online for the Legacy line, and some people. Uh, we're going in early, giving the uh, numbers to the employees and trying to see if they could secure some of the product. And uh, that's something I've done for years uh, with Star Wars. And even I even did it with Jurassic World for uh, for Hasbro's line, you know, a few years ago. And um, uh, initially, luckily, there was a one store that was cooperative. And they were they were cool with it. They gave me uh, the Jeep. They gave me the three human figures. And then, uh, I mean, after that, a couple of days later, I was like, you know, I should have gotten the extreme shop in T-Rex. So I went to back to uh, a different Target and uh, they had them in stock, but they were unwilling to provide it. So I called the original one I'd gone to and they said, yeah, come get it. So uh, those are my, my three uh, legacy purchases that I added to the collection. And uh, I did videos for them. I was absolutely thrilled with them. And uh, that made me especially excited for the 16th and all the product I was expecting to find. Um, so April 16th gets here to the rest of the world. It's simply April 16th, but to us, it's Jurassic Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is the first official day that all the Mattel, Lego, and, and Funko Font Kingdom merchandise is supposed to be on the shelf. And social media was full of people sharing their finds uh, or lack thereof. And it was truly a very exciting day. And uh, Matt, I know you, I called you on Monday morning while we were out looking for stuff. And uh, while my morning wasn't very good, which we'll get into in a little bit, I was still very excited, at least, you know, that it was Jurassic Monday and all these new products uh, were being found by a lot of people. Um, and I know you found some good stuff on Monday. So tell us a little bit about that. So, like, I found most of my stuff, uh, like, midnight um, like Sunday because uh, Monday I thought, okay, so here's what my I thought was going to be my original plan for my whole vlogs, right? I thought that the 16th, I was going to find everything, I was going to vlog it, I was going to go in the store and cry because I was a part of this and we all did this together, that we, we shifted from the crappy Hasbro products to sweet Mattel stuff and uh, that never happened. It was just uh, week or day by day getting stuff and not really surprised by it, but now that like I'm starting, I haven't unboxed everything yet, but... Now that I'm actually looking at it, it's just like starting to like finally dawn on I me mean, that this stuff is just freaking cool. But it, it was kind of weird how I expected it to be all in one day, like a Force Friday type deal on a Thursday night at midnight. But um, it was just, I got things little by little. And maybe that was a good thing that I I got things little by little and didn't get emotional in one go. Because uh, Sam, I watched your, your live stream and you and your sister were just like, so excited it was so awesome to watch that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we were like freaking out especially because you know the shelves were full and no one was there like nobody in new zealand i don't know any other collectors you know yeah <laughs> then i know kids don't even know because i don't know there, there isn't really 
there isn't any other toy stores currently that are stocking any of these toys it is just the warehouse which is quite bizarre um i've rung like farmers i've rung toy world nothing it's really really strange so that's the only place right now oh and there's toy co one other store that's um over past auckland city and that's it yeah so we just we just hit it all up in one day <laughs> but your guys's excitement was just like oh man that that was something i was like going for but i was just like oh man so i was like i was really chill about it probably not trying to freak out but like your your reactions that's why i also asked for other people's reactions so i can put them all together in my video is because uh just like to bring the community together type of deal because this is like a very exciting time so so exciting my god yeah and that's what it's all about, I, you know, is the enjoyment that people are getting out of this. And it's very apparent in a lot of the reactions that we've seen. Uh, Matt, your compilation had some of those reactions in there. You know, it's really cool to document all this because, you know, if, if we were to look back, you know, in 10, 15, 20 years this time and see how excited these things made us. I mean, I, I think it's just one of those things that, you know, it's really cool to look back on and makes you really happy. And I think ultimately that's that's the it's cool that we're getting new Jurassic merchandise. But, you know, our surprise and. Uh, our our uh, elation at finding all these new toys, I think, is what it's all about. Oh, I mean, we're we're five years old again. We're ten years old again. It's just so awesome. It is. I think what also makes it more awesome is that we. I think we were just as elated in 2015, even though the products sucked. But like, it makes it even more special now that like the products are freaking awesome. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I think in 2015, the big factor for me was that it had been so long since there had actually been a Jurassic movie, and right. uh, it had been so long since there were actual like toys distributed like at every store. I know Toys R Us had a few products, uh, 2009 or 2008, then again in 2013, yeah. but it wasn't like a big mass release like at all the stores uh, like it was for Jurassic World, so that was right. a huge part of it at that time. And I think yep. we were so desperate to get our hands on these toys, even though they were terrible. We went through that honeymoon <laughs> phase. Where we were like, these are really great. And then we're like, these are actually horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Like uh, the other day I was going back and looking at one of my videos I had done. I think it was the Raptor four pack, the target exclusive, oh, the Raptors God. that didn't have toe claws or oh anything. My gosh. It was stupid. And uh, in the video, I'm kind of like, well, you know, they don't have toy cl toe claws, but they still look pretty good. And then I look back on that. I'm like, what? Yeah, I know. Same. <laughs> I'm so glad at, right before maybe mm, I want to say five, six months ago, I've sold 85% of my Jurassic World toys and 50% of my Jurassic Park 3. Now, if, if some more cool Pteranodons come out, I'm pretty much going to sell like all my Jurassic Park 3 stuff. Like, I don't need any of the yeah. Hasbro crap no more because the Mattel stuff is just amazing. Yeah, and it was exactly the same for me. I ended up selling uh, the Moses War from Hasbro. I ended up selling uh, Stomp and Strike, uh, even the Bad Boy Indominus. I mean, it, it's crazy. When you look at eBay, uh, I haven't looked at the prices in recent weeks, but uh, like around the holidays, like some of those those horrible Jurassic World toys and the Dino Hybrid toys were selling for exorbitant prices on eBay. Right. Yeah. So, Sam, did you actually make it out on the 16th hunt for toys? Uh, no, because I ended up ringing my local warehouse and they just weren't available yet. So, uh, I just wasn't able to, I just had to wait. And then, um, basically said, I couldn't go in Monday. I couldn't go in Tuesday. So Wednesday morning, I grabbed my sister and I said, right, we are first ones in there. <laughs> They, nice. better, they better be on those shelves or I'm going to be bashing down the doors. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the coolest thing was when I walked in there. We were looking around going like we checked the toilet aisles and we're like where are they where are they we just couldn't see anything and bridget's like over there like right in the middle of the store we'd walked right past it <laughs> <laughs> and and the little lady there was still putting out the price tag so they were just like <laughs> freshly put there on the shelves waiting for us mental cases like you've got two grown women going oh my god <laughs> <laughs> just lucky there was no one else there that's awesome. Uh, does the warehouse also sell, uh, to your knowledge, Star Wars action figures? Yeah, it does. The whole lot. Um, Star Wars, Lego, just everything you can think of, really. Um, oh, wow. I, yeah, maybe I should mm -hmm. look at some Star Wars stuff for you if there's anything that, who knows, isn't released over there. It's released <laughs> here. Right on. It didn't even occur to me to, to stop there when I was in New Zealand last month. I, I wonder if they would have had anything. Yeah, I was I was going to... Um, ask you that too because you asked about like the collector stores but there isn't even really that much that much here mm -hmm. in the way of um yeah boys 
You know, there's a uh, there's a, actually a toy museum. I found out about it like towards the end of our trip. It's in uh, Wanaka near Queenstown. And uh, it, it, I was looking at it online and they actually have like a, it's a pretty big museum and they have like retro vintage toys from all kinds of different toy lines. I believe even Jurassic, but I just didn't get to make it over there. Funny you should say that. We went looking for the same thing. We never found it. We tried to GPS it. Oh, wow. Find it. <laughs> Wild. Yeah, but um, pretty awesome. Yeah, so on Monday the 16th, I had decided I was going to live blog my toy hunting on Instagram as well. And uh, I was also filming each stop for the Toy Hunting Adventures episode that went up on YouTube this week. And uh, anyone who watched knows that my Monday started off quite poorly. Uh, I went to one Walmart, and it was pretty much an impromptu start. I wasn't really planning on going to this Walmart, but it was kind of on the way. So I'm like, okay, I'm, er I'm up early. I'm going to go ahead and stop here. And... Um, they only had four of the five uh, Walmart exclusive battle damage dinosaurs on the pegs. And I think some of those little, the little tiny dinosaurs that come with the little die cast vehicle or something, they're really itty bitty ones. And uh, I hadn't planned on buying these uh, except for blue, which I did want, but it was kind of like I was there. And since that, that's all that was on the shelf, I was like, okay, well, I mean, this is new Jurassic. I, I bought them. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, I was told by a worker there that they had a pallet in the back of, of uh, Jurassic World and that I should return in a few hours when it was all stocked. So I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'll do that. So then I go ahead and go to Target. Uh, they open at 8 a.m. I was there a few minutes before, um, I, you know, super excited about, you know, you know, all the Jurassic toys I was going to find on the shelf. But when I get to the pegs, not a single Jurassic World toy. Oh, so and uh, it was so disappointing. So I, I went and talked to a couple workers, and uh, one of them said, uh, oh, they, well, they're not sold in our store. And I'm like, really? Because I was looking at the DPCI numbers on BrickSeek and on, uh, you know, on, even on Target.com for a local pickup, and it says you guys have them. Um, and then it, it turned into, oh, well, actually, yes, it, it looks like we do have them, but they're inaccessible, so mm -hmm. we can't retrieve them for you. And then someone else said, uh, you know, call later in the week or come back later in the week. And at this point, I was like, so bummed out because, you know, I made all this effort to be there right at opening, expecting all this great stuff on the pegs. And uh, it, it just didn't pan out. Very disappointing. And at this point, I was like, okay, well, I was planning to go to another Walmart. Let me head to, to that Walmart. Once again, nothing. Uh, the only the only silver lining to that visit was that I had uh, done an online pickup for, for the Mosasaurus the day before, uh, and I was able to get that. Um, and I did notice a little bit later that it had like a little itty bitty tear on its jaw. So oh, yeah. That was kind of, that was disappointing too. Um, that so then, you know what? Yeah. So at this point, I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to go home and, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I got breakfast at Chick-fil-A, went home and regrouped. And I said, okay, I'm going to go back to this one Walmart where they told me that, you know, they were going to have the product out. And uh, that was like the one high, real highlight of the day because they actually did hold true to their word and they had all the product on the, on the pegs. And it wasn't everything in the line. They didn't have um, the uh, thrash and throw. They didn't have uh, the human action figures, but they still had most of the line. So uh, ultimately, I only ended up with a couple of attack packs. I got the Gallimimus and the Dilophosaurus. And, uh, you know, so bummed out from how the whole day went. I ended up ordering a few things on Amazon for same day delivery mm -hmm. and I received those. Yeah. So I, I got, um, the two story packs, uh, blue with Owen and then gyrus here with Claire, uh, Indoraptor and uh, stegosaurus, of course, cause that was like one of the main things that I wanted. And, uh, so it was an interesting day. It, it wasn't any, anywhere the way that I thought it was going to go, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like I was saying, uh, it was just so cool to know that Jurassic Park product was out there and people were finding it and, uh, you know, that it was just day one. I mean, there was still going to be, you know, day two and so forth to, to find new product. Um, so it was a very mixed bag, but overall, uh, I, I ended up pretty happy at the end. Nice. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk the day since the 16th. Uh, I know that we've all been into the stores uh, since then. Uh, it's been a few days since then. Um, Sam, what has been your experience uh, in the days that you've been going to, to the warehouse and looking for these Jurassic toys? Uh, well, to be honest, I've been checking it like every day. <laughs> in fact, um, just today I've got one on the Hibiscus Coast where I live, so it's like a 10-minute mm, drive. 
so that's my local i always check it and um since i've checked it all of the thrash and throw have gone off the shelves not that there were a heck of a lot but there were about five wow so they've all gone which is great um the big colossal tees are still there i think there's like three or four i maybe i was the only one to have bought one so far (laughs) not really sure but um I don't know, I guess I look at it from a parent's point of view, at least, you know, for the money you get this awesome electronic T-Rex and that's worth getting and parents are probably thinking, oh, yeah. where, where am I going to put a colossal? Um, <laughs> because right now it's the school holidays as well, so I'm sure there are children coming in going, mummy, mummy, daddy, please, <laughs> buy me a dinosaur. Totally. Um, I mean, kids, who doesn't love dinosaurs? Exactly. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think of... Oh, I tried to go in and get a um, pachycephalosaur today, and they are gone. So the little legacy line, a few of those have gone. Um, the cool little yellowy stripy raptor, they aren't even uh-huh. left at my local. Um, no more Gallimimus. Uh Yeah, I think so. The cheaper ones have, have definitely moved. Doesn't look like any of the vehicles have been purchased yet, but it all looks the same to me. Um, so I just think people aren't really aware of them yet. Yeah, and that's usually the case, um, obviously, for new toy lines that are coming out for movies that aren't going to even be out for a couple of months. Um, yeah. And you also mentioned that like the attack packs had been selling, and that's also something I've seen over the years. It's usually like the action figures or um, you know the lower the lower cost products that make up the bulk of the toy line are often uh, some of the first products to go, um, largely due to the prices. Of course, uh, these attack pack dinos are. Uh, at least here in the U.S., they're eight dollars. Which you know, if, if you're like a parent, or um, you know, you have a kid that's asking you to buy a toy, you know, just kind of spontaneously. I mean, eight dollars. It's kind of hard to go wrong there. Yeah, they, they, the the attack pack are like ten dollars each here. So yeah, yeah, pretty close. And uh, Matt, what about you? I know that you've been in the stores a lot since the sixteenth, uh, and you found some stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So um, I went. Uh, I want to say I went Monday, and I got like a pickup shot. For my first vlog, Life Finds a Way, of just the stuff on the shelves. And pretty much after that, I haven't really found anything. I don't need anything, but I've just been looking. Like, so Friday before hockey, I went into Target, and Target was just, like, pretty much done. But it, today at, at Walmart, in the same exact area, right across the street, um, the Walmart was completely destroyed. There's no, like, attack packs or Roarvores or Battle Damage Dinos. All they had left was, like, a couple Owens. And then the, the more expensive items like the uh, thrash and throws and the super colossal. So I do think parents are going to stay away from the bigger items because they cost more money, even though they are really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. It is like having a uh, a small dog in my house right now. <laughs> you, you know what? I, I haven't unboxed my super colossal battle damage yet, but I cannot wait. <laughs> I'm going to have a fight with uh, my chihuahua. Maybe I'll film it. <laughs> Oh yeah, I already scared my cat. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. But then I find him a couple of hours ago curled up next to it, so something's gone on. While yeah, I-, I saw your Instagram story. He's like, Catavan's right next to the, the, the super close of yesterday. She, he was scared of it. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, it's great. It's like you keep. I keep walking past it, not getting a fright, but I'm like, wow, that's the Stan Winston T Rex. <laughs> that is. I know it looks really good. Oh yeah, it's just bizarre. Totally. And uh, for anyone listening, uh, two things I want to mention. Uh, first of all, Matt's video, Life Finds a Way, is extraordinary. Yes. Aww. And uh, anyone who's listening needs to go and, and you know, put that on their, uh, you know, watch later or, or watch it now. I mean, it's, it's a fantastically produced video that uh, gets very personal. Uh, Matt, I think this might very well be perhaps the best video you've done and uh, definitely the most meaningful and personal to you. And uh, it, you, you put it together... And uh, talk a lot about things that were going on at a point in your life in which uh, I actually met you uh, when you were here in California. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was it was really great to see that, and uh, you know, very moving. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Wow. It, yeah. It's kind of nuts how it it really hit me like this month that you know I actually affect people and you t- everyone else too. Like Sam with your art and Instagram stuff, and then Victoria with your toy reviews. Also, it's just but I was just like you know. I, uh, there are people out there that, you know, they, they're affected by me and 
Victoria, you do a great job of tour reviews. And if anyone ever comes to me like, why don't you do a tour review of this? Like, just go to Victoria's Cantina. She probably does a better job than I do. <laughs> she has great high qualities. Just do it her. I, I went to film school. Like, I shouldn't be making these. I have to make films. So, and I'm, I'm obsessed with that stuff. Yes, I'm obsessed with Jurassic Park. But in a way, I feel like I did my job by changing the, the license over in a way. So I need to move mm -hmm. on to the next thing in my life. I'll still do toy stuff. So like I did that vlog, Life Finds a Way, and then it, it climaxed into the second video, which is the vlog of finding the stuff. Um, the whole month of April for these products, and that's it's longer and it, it won't make you cry. It's more entertaining and funny. So that one's well, day, the first day, one, like two or three minutes in, I'm like silent tears, just screaming. I'm like, oh, that was yeah, like yeah. So sorry. Moving. I no, warned no, it's people. Oh, thank you. I, yeah, I warned people on Instagram story. I was like, just to warn you, it's a little heavy. <laughs> but You're wow, thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's absolutely terrific. And thank you for the kind words. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody more than you was on Hasbro's house about getting things in gear during the Jurassic World days. I mean, right. Uh, it's no secret that, that the product was abysmal by, you know, Hasbro standards even. And um you know, you were there, you know, doing your videos and saying, hey, this is what we're looking for. You know, the arm yeah. shouldn't break off this uh, this T-Rex. one of the it, it first was, yeah. videos I think I'd seen of Matt's, and I was like, oh, my God, this guy. This guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, Sam, you're going to be contributing some videos to Victoria's Cantina for the uh, Cretaceous Cantina Dinosaur Reviews. And uh, one of the first ones is going to be the Super Colossal T-Rex. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you gonna wear those black gloves? Did you make like a couple like a videos in 2015? I remember you. I remember you. <laughs> I, I think I subscribed. Yeah, I think I've subscribed to your channel. I was like, who is this chick? And then like a year or two later, you follow me. I was like, wow, this chick's freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I tried she to is awesome. those because those were just crappy. Like, yeah, I, I need a decent camera and stuff if I want to do reviews. But I don't think. I don't know. I'm I'm not very good at that stuff. That's why we have you and Victoria. But. I, I definitely want to give it a give it a shot. I um, got a little tripod for my phone, so I'm going to try it on my phone. But good luck with getting oh. that thing in the frame. <laughs> See if it works or not. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you'll do just fine. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 crazy. I mean, like you know, we've been talking to each, to each other for a few years now, and um, yeah, it's just wow. Where does the time go? <laughs> I know, right? But it's crazy. So since the 16th. Um, let's see. On the 17th, which was a day after, obviously, 16, 17, <laughs> I went to uh, two Walmarts in the morning. And uh, the first one actually had some product out. It was a different Walmart than from the previous day. I mean, there's a bunch of Walmarts around here. And uh, they, ha they, they did pretty good. They had pretty much all the same stuff that the, the Walmart had the day before. I got an extra Battle Damage Blue because I really liked that figure. And I wanted an extra one for toy photography and whatnot. And uh, I, then I went to another Walmart, and uh, they ended up having uh, pretty much the same selection as well. There was like the Battle Damage Super Colossal T-Rex, and uh, they had uh, the, the T-Rex um, Extreme Chompin that comes with the Monolophosaurus. Um, so I went ahead and, and picked that up, and uh, I, I called this one Target because I didn't think they were going to have anything out, and I wanted to see if they had anything in the toys uh, for Jurassic, and uh, unfortunately they didn't answer, so... I wasn't too far away. I said, you know, I'm just going to swing by, see what it looks like. And to me, this was like the most like impactful, like toy find I had found in probably years. Like it was beautiful. And I know I shared a photo of it on, on Instagram, but the toy shelves were packed. Like half of the aisle was just Jurassic and it was all the different lines. It looked like they had just put everything out that morning because they had uh, absolutely everything that could possibly be had was there wow. uh, except for ellie for whatever reason the ellie figure was already gone but uh everything else was there i ended up with the pteranodon and i ended up with um the mosasaurus because uh, i told you guys how the one i had had a little tear i went ahead and got another one so i could exchange the or return the initial one and uh this was on uh tuesday wednesday i didn't go anywhere uh, Thursday, I ended up going to uh, a different Target, uh, and uh, this was yet a different one I hadn't been back to, the one that I had gotten the Legacy toys from uh, the week prior. And um, 
actually, this is where I picked up the Legacy Pteranodon, and that's where I ended up also getting the Carnotaurus. I had actually just gone to this target to return the, the first Mesosaurus that had the little tear, but I ended up buying stuff because I cannot go to these stores lately without leaving with something. Yeah, <laughs> my problem exactly. I can't do it. I've banned myself. <laughs> like I was scared to come home the other day because Nick saw, you know, a bag of dinosaurs in my hand. He's like, Oh God, what, what have you got this time? <laughs> it must be a girl it's, it's... thing. Cause like I can go into target and come out with nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then again, I'm not your typical girl where I could go and spend like hundreds or hundreds on makeup, but you know, give me toys and <laughs> we're away. Totally. Oh yeah. Totally agree with that. Yeah. That's because you're cool. <laughs> Give me some dinosaurs. Non-conventional, man. That's the way to go, yeah. man. Who needs to, who needs to conform? Nobody. <laughs> um, yeah. The only, the only time I've been back to the store since Thursday, actually this morning, I did pop into Walmart because I had a pickup to do. And uh, this was the very first Walmart that I had been to the other um, on Monday where they didn't have anything and they told me to come back. Um, but the shelves had been cleaned out. There was The only thing they had on the shelves was... Uh, gosh, did they have it? They had a, they had like two attack packs, and that was like it. Like everything was gone. The Super Colossal was gone. Uh, the T Rex with the Monolophosaurus was gone. All of the uh, Roarvors were gone. The attack. The uh, what's the bigger one called? The Action Attack. The like the Stegosaurus, Carnotaurus. Is it Action yeah, Attack? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all the Action Attacks were gone. It was literally just like two uh, attack packs. Um, so I mean, that was really cool to see, but. Uh, it was kind of like, okay, well, I can't buy anything because there's nothing here. So ultimately, it was a good thing in that sense. I didn't have to spend money. But I was actually there to do a pickup. Um, Walmart had put up, and I know, Matt, you're not a huge fan of this one, but they had put up the Jeep that comes with the Dimorphodon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And those, they're the only Jeeps I have at the moment in my store. Ew. Nice. Ew. It, so in the U.S., it retails at twenty four ninety nine. For whatever reason, on Walmart.com, they put it up for like $16. I don't know why. Damn. Uh, which is basically the same price as the Legacy Jeep at Target. Uh, the difference is, of course, that this Jeep has like the action feature where it throws a net and it comes with the Dimorphodon. So I was like, you know, for the price. That is dirty, right? It, yeah, it's like rusted up. Yeah. That's $35 so was, here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's the difference. Ugh, nope. <laughs> Yeah, so I thought to myself, I could either buy the attack pack with the Dimorphodon by itself for $8, or I could spend $8 more, and then I also get this Jeep. So that was my logic. Uh, always trying to justify it, of course. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I ended up with it. I brought it home, and I haven't done anything with it yet, but uh, that was my only toy purchase today. So um, it, it sounds like things are being sold. I mean, even from what I've seen online, is people are saying... Uh, yeah, I went back to the store. Stuff is sold through. I can't find anything now. Um, and I think that's a great thing because right. uh, it, people are actually buying the stuff. And all that means is that the stores are going to reorder. They're going to get more stock. Yep. Uh, Mattel's probably going to make you know more multiple waves of product for us to buy. So that, that, that's a great thing. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's great to hear. Especially because, you know, nothing's nothing's happening in little old New Zealand <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> and it's only been like not even a week, right? Yeah, right. it's like not yeah. even a full week. So I'm assuming they're going to restock. Yeah, it sucks there's nothing on the, on the shelves right now for people, but it is a good thing that – because, okay, we need to show Mattel that this is – and Universal – that this is what we wanted, and how do you do that? You put your money where your mouth is. So we are for now, and I think we will be and continue to be. So when they restock, whenever – I hope it's not till like their second wave, which is in like June or whatever – Hope it's like literally, you know, two weeks. I'm assuming. I have no idea how you know the, the stuff works, but um, mm. I hope they restock soon. I'd like to get some vehicles. <laughs> like they have, I have, I haven't seen everything. Like I, I've, vehicle wise, besides the blast and the RC, I've only seen the submarine twice. And I thought about getting it, but for right now I'm gonna hold off. But I haven't seen that one like pickup truck thing, the transport cargo truck, which is kind of cool. But I, I haven't seen that. I have I haven't seen the other Jeep with the Dimorphodon pack, even though I don't want it. I just haven't seen it, so it's just like, where is all this other crap? And then then they'll surprise us, and you'll see images of like the freaking Spinosaurus. I'm like, where the hell did that come from? That that wasn't shown off anywhere. <laughs> so it's it's like I don't know. This it's kind of overwhelming in a sense. So. Yeah, yeah. The I, that's the only thing I actually haven't seen is the Jeep with Dimorphodon. I haven't seen it in the store. I only got it because I done an online order, but. Uh, and they shipped it to the store. But uh, I think I've seen everything at this point uh, from the first 
uh, run of everything, the first wave of all the, even the exclusives. I think I've seen everything now that you mention it. Oh, you're so lucky. Oh. There's so much missing over here. Do you want to well, I haven't missing? bought everything, but <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> Don't worry. For the you're you're going to get it. The yeah. Chomping, um, the legacy humans. Yeah, it, it sucks. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I really hope yeah. it comes out over here, but I'm not sure. What if they're just exclusives and they just won't? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of weird that they have... Uh, it's kind of weird that they have Legacy over there, but it's just the dinosaurs. Like, it's not the humans. Yeah, that's, that's it. It's just yeah. the pack. Uh, what is it? The... Um, attack pack. The attack pack. That's it. That's all. Um, so strange. Yeah, they've got the Fair. super colossal, but not the mosasaur. So I'm sad. Like, not really. I'm really happy with what I've got so <laughs> far. I'm so lucky that there's been no competition. There's just me buying everything at once. And to be fair, I wouldn't have even needed to do that. But being the uh, freak that I am, <laughs> I had to buy it. And well, I need like, uh, three mosasaurs from you. And I, and well, I need... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, talking about our, our, our buddy Baptiste, too. Yeah, for the Jurassic World and Jurassic World Dino Hybrid, uh, I was basically his personal personal shopper here in the U.S. <laughs> I, I, I sent him a package that was probably the size of, oh, goodness, like a giant crate. The state it was, of uh, Texas. So, wait, what, he, he, has, he hasn't found a lot, or was this back? No, no, this is like 2016 or whatever. So, it's an inside joke nobody got <laughs> with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but yeah i'm sure you'll you'll find more stuff there i'm sure they're I, I can't see them not shipping the rest of a line like legacy over there but like I, I told you earlier uh if for some reason it doesn't let me know I'm happy to get a list together and track those things down for you here yay so cool having collection <laughs> friends So let's talk about the product itself. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, no matter what your toy hunting experiences have been, uh, the one the one constant has been that it seems like people are overwhelmingly happy with what Mattel has been putting out. And uh, people are, are pretty positive. The response has been very positive across the board. Um, so let's talk about the things that uh, are, are basic reactions to the product we've been finding. And uh, Matt, I'll go ahead and start with you. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> I pretty much like everything. Um, right off the bat, I have not unboxed everything because I possibly want to do like a mega live stream, and I'm just like waiting for um some more things to come into fruition for that. But even the stuff I didn't like, like the super colossal, um, I ended up getting the battle damage one because it's electronic, and I love electronics and. I, I have a feeling once I unbox that thing, that might be my favorite one, which is really messed up because when I saw it at Toy Fair and all that, I'm like, that's so stupid because it's not in scale. But I'm, uh, I think it's the box. <laughs> I think it's the box. Cause, cause <laughs> I, I think I think it's the box because it, you know, it looks like the bull box type of deal or whatever or a retro one because everything else is open packaging. And it sucks, but. I don't know. There's something about it, man. It's just, I like big things, but this thing is, yeah, there might not be room for it, but you better make room. <laughs> <laughs> you make so room. I like, so I like, incredible. There are some like problems, like maybe some of the Roarvors don't stand. Apparently the Metricanthosaurus doesn't stand well, but I mean, none of these <laughs> things have screw holes. They stand better for sure than the Hasbro offerings. I had a Raptor or, or I had something. Like on my stomach, and it was like my stomach or my whole body's at like a 45 degree angle on my computer, and the dinosaur is still standing on my body. Like, how is that possible? Like, it's just unbelievable. Yes, some of the raptors, like the story pack and the uh, legacy Lost World raptor, have big feet, but I'm looking, I have mm -hmm. the, the Lost World legacy raptor in my hand right now, and it's, in my opinion, the greatest raptor toy ever made because of two reasons. One, it has articulation for kids and collectors and the sculpt is accurate. Yes, the paint is not perfect, but it's at certain angles it looks like if you have the head at a, like a like a side like a 20 degree angle, 
looking towards you. It looks perfect. And yes, it does have big feet, but this toy has rubber on it, and it has a really great action feature for kids. This is, in my opinion, this is the greatest Raptor toy ever made. So, Wow. Yeah. I mean, that that's really high praise for that toy. I, uh, uh, As you guys know, I prefer the, the Battle Damage version. I think it has, uh, it has smaller feet, for, for, first of all. Uh, but I feel like the sculpt overall is just a little bit more accurate, even though it has no, that really it ridiculous is. It totally feature. is. I agree 110%. F- for photography and even playability, the, the battle damage door is great. The, the, the proportions on the battle damage are far better than the story pack, but I think the story pack for kids is, I think is better because of that, that jumping action feature. It's so cool. So I, I pick the story pack. But you, it's you. Yeah, I could totally understand the, that. The battle damage is totally a good choice, though. Totally. And Sam, what has been your overall reaction and general impression from the new toy line? I'm just so blown away, as you guys have probably heard on my story. Like I'm looking at, um, at the Legacy Raptor right now, and I'm just looking at the head sculpts. But even the whole body, like it doesn't even bother me that the feet are oversized. Like it doesn't bother me at all, and that's saying something, because. Right. You know, the head sculpt is so freaking accurate. And the beautiful long tail and the the flimsy hands, I still like that because they're kind of rubber. You know, and the ball joint yeah. rolls in and out. And like you said, the action feature for kids, it's just everything that a child and a collector could want. You know, and we have to remember that it is a toy. It's not always going to be perfect. Um, mm-hmm. But right. th- that just doesn't matter to me. And I also just picked up the little attack pack blue today as well i've actually got both of them i have the one um basically the the legacy raptor with owen and i have just the little blue package by itself and they're just ah oh, they're just perfect to me <laughs> because you know i look back at um kenner and even the lost world raptors and they're they're fantastic don't get me wrong but the head sculpts mm-hmm. have always been off right. and i think I that's guess. kind of the issue for me like i'm always going to adore that nostalgia but um these are just out of this world I love them. Absolutely. Yeah, that's my two cents. Nice. Yeah, I've been, you know, when we saw the photos coming out from uh, Toy Fair earlier this year, uh, I mean, everything looked really good. There were a lot of complaints about proportions. We've talked about, like, the Raptor having big feet um, and, uh, you know, paint being a little bit light on some of the, on the, on the toys. But um, actually having them in hand and actually seeing them on the pegs uh, has made me really like fall in love with these toys like really quickly like the sculpted detail is 110 percent there oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah they are they are very detailed uh the paint applications they are a little bit light in some respects on certain figures it's not the case on all of them uh for example you have like the battle damage stiggy moloch which looks pretty incredible uh you have like the carnotaurus which has a very nice uh, look to it. Uh, I like the the darker pattern detail that goes into the red, and it has a nice gradient going into the white. Um, I mean, some of these just look fantastic. The T Rex is all across the board, whether it's the Extreme Chomping T Rex, the Thrash and Throw T Rex, or the Super Colossal. They have a very accurate silhouette, very accurate head sculpt that looks so much like Stan Winston's classic model, um, and just the the overall playability. You guys mentioned the Raptor being able to jump. I mean, that's just fun. Uh, the one that I've been really impressed with as well has been the gyrosphere with Claire. Uh, the, the figure itself is great, but the gyrosphere, it's actually a gyrosphere. Like the chair stays stable as you're rolling it around and uh, you can fit the two figures in there. Um, I, I mean, I really am happy with the aesthetics and the way everything looks, but the playability of this line is incredible. What? You're telling me that the uh, gyrosphere is not a one-inch gumball with a paper cutout inside? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Do you know, when Garbage. I got um, when I got the, uh, what was it, that chomping um, Indominus Rex with the little gyrosphere, I never even took the gyrosphere out because I thought it looked that crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the that was the one that was better than the one I was talking about. The one I was talking about was the Tyrannosaurus Rex lockdown set, and it didn't even have like a ability to put a human in a gyrosphere. That two and a half inch human, it like it was legit was like an inch and a half gyrosphere or two inch gyrosphere, and it just had yeah. a paper, a cardboard cutout, two dimensional cutout of a guy sitting in it. I was like, you gotta oh, be clean. Yeah, that's me. why I didn't even bother. It was just absolutely abysmal. But um, I'll just throw in there. I think Matt, I was talking to you um, oh, a few months back now when there were still like stock images of these um, Mattel dinosaurs. Like we hadn't seen any Toy Fair stuff yet. 
and I was looking yeah, at them yeah. and I'm like, yeah, they still look really average. And I was not excited. I was uh -huh. just like, nah, not sold on the, t especially the T-Rex, because I think you sent me a photo of the T-Rex that they were possibly going to release, like a prototype. And I'm like, oh my God, that is looking way better than what we were going to get from Mattel. And then I saw um, the Toy Fair videos and I'm like, holy shit, this looks, they look really, <laughs> really good. And then just to get them in hand, then it succeeded my expectations again. And I'm just blown away. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, some of those leaks, I mean, I didn't send anybody leaks, but I saw leaks on 4chan or wherever. And I did see some leaks of the Thrash and Throw 2X, and I was like, oh, dear Jesus, please let that not be the Tyrannosaurus Rex we're going to get. And then I saw it at Toy Fair, and I was like, eh, okay, that's pretty cool. And then, like, you know, our friend Chris Likes Dinos is like, um... No, trust me, it's really cool. I'm like, okay, whatever. And then, man, just having this thing in your hand, yes, some of the little lines you can see suck, and it's not rubber, but until I touch that super colossal out of the box, I want to, I don't know, it might be just premature saying this is the best Rex toy because it has literally everything you'd want. It, it has detailing. It has the stomp feature. It has accurate roar for the most part, and it has the ability to thrash and pick up figures. That's really cool. I think that's awesome. And 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 it stands. The Thrasher, th yes. the Thrasher, the, the Thrasher stood. The Kenner Red Rex barely stood. The Bull Rex never stood. This Rex stands. You want to know why? I'm just going to prematurely uh, talk about this because I I thought about talking about this in my possible live stream. They put one foot forward than the other, um, and what they did was to balance that out. The, the tail swings the opposite side. And they were smart enough to put the little button that's pressure sensitive so it's raised forward to put it on the forward foot rather than the back foot because if they put it on the back foot, it's just going to fall forward every time. But they were smart enough to put the button raised on the front foot so it would balance it out and push itself even. So Mattel really did their, their homework. And whoever worked on a majority of these toys should get a raise or continue to work on the uh, line. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'd love to even just elaborate on that point a little, a little bit more. I remember uh, a kid from a center I worked at, he really wanted the Indominus Rex, and he'd ended up with this Irex, the big bad boy. And his mum told me he would just cry and cry because he couldn't get the thing to stand. And I'm like, man, oh. if anything sort of hits you in the face it's that this five-year-old is beside himself because it can't stand up and you know even at my age i get infuriated when these figures can't stand so mm -hmm. you know and she tried to order another one and i'm like well it's not going to work it has standing issues <laughs> um yeah but yeah it's it's just it just drives me mad it's like a pet peeve so to have this t-rex standing is is just amazing to me yeah it's yeah. pretty bad when like me who's not an engineer I'm an artist, has to go and make YouTube videos how to take apart a dinosaur toy and put, like, <laughs> fish weights and in its butt. rebalance it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the thing with toys. I mean, first and foremost, these are toys, and they need to function as a toy. And one of the most basic functions of any toy uh, should be for it to be able to stand. And that was a tremendously big problem with, with Jurassic World from Hasbro. I mean, probably two-thirds of the line had issues standing. Uh, just from very small feet, poor centers of gravity, and just you're just really poor engineering, really. Um, but you know, when you look at these T Rexes from Mattel, all three of them stand no problem, and they don't just stand. You can pose them standing upright, you can pose them crouching down, and they stay standing up. It's amazing. Did you say two thirds of the Hasbro stuff? You're being generous. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Probably. Probably. It, it was. It was very miserable. <laughs> time uh to be collecting these things so i you know like you said props to mattel for uh really doing the good engineering on these products and making sure they're putting out good toys because i think this toy I, long term is probably going to end up being like the best toy line of of 2018 maybe even of all time uh which it, i kind of surprised myself even saying that because there have been wonderful toy lines over the last four decades i mean you go back to the late 70s you had star wars uh, there was things like G.I. Joe, He-Man. Um, in the 90s, of course, we had a bunch of toy lines that were pretty awesome. The original Jurassic Park. 
Um, they just don't make toy lines like this anymore. Nobody does. Nobody makes toy lines this expansive right. and uh, with actual quality toys that function and that look good. Um, so it's it's really something of a little a miracle that these even exist. Um, but you know what? I think we should just soak up every minute of it because it's it's all awesome. Well said. Yeah, like if you look at some of the Rorivores, you can really tell like some of the detail, like the little pebble textures. Actually, you can probably say that in like any one of them, but man, they did a really good job with the sculpts and the and just like actually caring. Definitely, remember how you know, used to have on the box like we care about your product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It really feels like this toy line harkens back to Kenner. I mean, Kenner, uh, you know, such a classic company uh, that did a lot of amazing stuff from Star Wars to um, a lot of the great toy lines that came out of the 90s, Swamp Thing, Jurassic Park, uh, Robin Hood. I mean, uh, you know, just to scrape the the top of the surface. But uh, this toy line really harkens back to the good old days, you know, the, the 80s, the 90s of you know, really expansive toy lines that had quality product. Because like I said, you, you just don't see things like this anymore. So it, it truly is a miracle that, that these exist. Yeah, I think it does feel very, you know, very nostalgic, very retro and, and a huge nod back to Kenner. Uh, you know, in my eyes, it's just really, really exciting. I feel, you know, like that kid again. I never got to purchase, um, you know, any of the Jurassic Park or Lost World dinosaurs um at that time i did i know i did with jurassic park 3 i got to like buy the trike i remember that and it was really exciting so to be you know an adult and get to go and buy all of these and be that excited is just i never really thought that would happen again like after um hasbro's just absolute sham i just didn't believe in the toys anymore so thank you know what you're so right both of you it's like (sighs) It's like a miracle that this type of... Because, you know, you hear just so much negativity that, like, oh, they'll never make that in in this day and age. Like, mostly Star Wars stuff, Victoria, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, they're never going to do this, they're never going to do that. Yeah. Oh, you want a sail barge? That's $500. And then, oh, look at that. You know, the sail barge made it. So it's just like, you're never going to have a a Kenner-like toy quality now. Oh, really? Really? Well, maybe you should look at the Mattel Jurassic World line. Because (laughs) this, I I am so, I'm not jealous for kids now because when I was a kid, I had high quality stuff. But it is an awesome time right now to be a kid and a Jurassic Park fan because this stuff is freaking sweet. Like, it, it really is. Um, um, maybe it is a miracle, mm-hmm. but it's, it's it kind of sounds weird saying that, but it kind of is though. No, it is, it is. It feels like a miracle. It still feels surreal to me. I know. It still. I don't think still has like hit me yet. Like holy crap, you know. Like <laughs> like it's crazy. Yeah. Like look at like do you guys own. Um, I don't think you have the Jeep yet, Sam. But um, Victoria, you have the Legacy Jeep, right? I have two of them. The, with, with with the with the wing yeah, with, with, with it, the yeah. holy crap! This thing is like straight from like the the movie screen. I just like picked mm-hmm. it picked it from like the brachiosaur like <laughs> scene. Yeah, and it's just like wow. And th- this thing, it's not as playable. I'm gonna talk about this probably in my live stream. It's not as playable like broken windshield or whatever as the Bush Devil Tracker. But this thing, I think, just craps on the Bush, Bush Devil Tracker. It just looks. Like I bought a model kit of it, you know, and this was sixteen yeah. freaking bucks. That's amazing. It blows it is, my it, mind. You can put the compies on it. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's crazy. Um, the winch probably could be a little bigger, but I try to. You know, I'm putting. A, Alan, I only have the Alan Grant figure out of packaging now, but it's it's just uh, like it blows my mind. Even the human figures. I don't know if you want to segue into those because we haven't talked about those, but knee articulation and elbow articulation and hinges for both the hips and the shoulders just like oh my gosh and the accuracy mm-hmm. like holy crap this looks like sam neil and not like some generic clay face <laughs> i haven't seen i've only seen obviously images of them i've only seen them on youtube but they look you know like the actor counterparts they honestly do like even kenner couldn't do that well kenner did it but not like all the time like here it looks like every single actor's likeliness is going to be on point i will seriously lose it if they make an Eddie Carr figure. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, they look incredible. Um, uh, I was just yet yeah, uh, a couple of days ago unboxing uh, like the the Claire with Gyrosphere and the Owen with the, the with the Raptor Blue, 
And uh, I mean, Claire looks just like Bryce Dallas Howard. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I know. Yeah, I looked at her in package. Owen looks pretty good. I have no idea who that random mercenary is, but I can't wait to see like more because I obviously like the legacy of stuff. I want to see like more of Lost World and Jurassic Park figures. Mm-hmm. Even the little guys who never got figures. I want honestly. I want to see an AJ figure. Give me because I never had an AJ Kenner. I always wanted one of those and the Ludlow. Like I want to see those those guys and girls. I can't wait to see. Oh my gosh! I totally. I cannot. I cannot wait to see what Sarah Harding and and um, Roland look like. Oh my gosh, that would be. I will. I I might cry. I will cry if I get in my hands a, a Sarah Harding that looks like Julianne Moore and a Pete Postlewaite. Oh man, Roland Temple. That'd be so cool. And the the greatest thing is we we can talk about this also. The prices. Are, well, not for you, Sam, probably because of the tax hike or whatever, or tariffs or whatever. Yeah. Ever. But here in America, it also, Victoria knows this too, what we get for a human figure for $8 is a miracle, and it blows my mind personally. Oh, yeah. But but the other dinosaurs too are like priced very adequately, and the vehicles for the most part. But this stuff, it was if it was not Mattel, because you and I, Victoria, know this, but Mattel does a good job with their superheroes or you know the DC or whatever, mm-hmm. that they price it, like even the vehicles. I remember you texted me like a year or two ago for a Batman Batmobile, and like, dude, if this was like Hasbro, this would be double the price. I was like, I do not doubt that statement one bit, <laughs> Yeah, because you are right. Yeah, that, that's one thing I did want to bring up, absolutely, is the price points. Uh, at least, you know, here in the U.S., I know they're more expensive in New Zealand and in other countries, but the, the price points on these toys are very, very reasonable. And it's actually quite stunning because uh, I know we were talking about this as well the other day, but if Hasbro were putting these toys out, there's no way that an, an action attack dinosaur like the Stegosaurus or the Carnotaurus would cost 20 bucks. It costs 30 bucks right. at least. Right. Uh, the human figures would probably cost like 13 um mattel has always been really good not only about pricing but also distribution i mean uh hasbro that's been an ongoing issue with them for years now is is how easy it is or how difficult it is to find product but mattel if you look back over the last several years uh, with the dc multiverse or uh their lines for the superheroes or you know whatever it is they always have really strong distribution yeah so i thought early on that was going to be one of the positive aspects of this line and i guess long term uh, you know, like I said, we're still in the very first week, but long term, we'll see how that actually pans out for Jurassic. But we're definitely off to a very promising start. I think it should be okay because um, I collect their WWE stuff, and for the most part, um, I've had bleh, I haven't had any problems collecting their stuff, and I've totally seen a bunch of superhero stuff that they've had. So I have way more faith and trust in them than I do for Hasbro because. Honestly, that Hasbro's distribution problems made me quit buying Marvel Legends, and it made me quit buying Star Wars three and three quarter inch and six inch stuff. And I just moved to Lego Star Wars, so it's unfortunate. But uh-huh. you see the difference in the two qual or the two companies in terms of their you know mission statement, I guess. Yeah. Or what they really, you know, pride themselves on. I don't know how to really express myself, mm-hmm. but. There's there's definitely a difference, and I have faith in Mattel for sure because of uh, their previous engagements with the customer. <laughs> and and all you need to do for for proof of this is go to the toy aisle. Uh, you know, a five POA Star Wars action figure that maybe has like a little gun accessory or something is eight dollars, and uh, a Mattel Jurassic Park figure that has. Uh, you, you know, pretty good articulation. I mean, ball jointed shoulders, uh, insert molded elbows, uh, hips, and knees, and uh, comes with a you know a little baby dinosaur and an accessory. Eight right. bucks as well. I mean, there's no comparison. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like for the price point here, um, I know it's a little more expensive, but for me, it's totally worth it. I, it does not even bother me because I know. You know, the playability and the quality you're getting, the aesthetics of it, it's just amazing. So, of course, I'm going to buy them. (laughs) Definitely. Yeah. Um, So one thing I want to talk about uh, before we wrap up here is uh, the standout products of the line, things that 
we have purchased that have really stood out to us as being some of our favorite uh, things so far. And again, it is still early. I don't personally have everything in the line. There's still a lot of stuff I'd like to get over time. And uh, we know that stuff is still going to be coming. Like Matt, you mentioned that Legacy Spinosaurus. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be more stuff coming. Uh, the uh, Ian Malcolm figures in Wave 2 of Legacy. Um, so I, and I anticipate that there's, there's a lot more we haven't seen yet. Um, so let's talk about some of the standout things that from the line that we really especially like. Uh, Sam, I'll go ahead and start with you. Oh, man. Well, um, I think the first thing I set out to buy was a T-Rex because, uh, you know, back in 2015, I refused to buy any T-Rex. I was just disgusted (laughs) in the way they looked. Um, The Raptors, they were still bad, but they weren't as bad. So uh, as soon as I saw that thrash and throw, I just lost it. I'm like, yeah, this Mm -hmm. is coming home with me. And Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What were you going to say, Matt? I just laughed. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's it's just you know, and I'm I'm the big Raptor fan, but of course, you know, I've always wanted a Rexy that looks like Rexy, right. <laughs> you know, and I've got it right, right here, and I am just still can't still can't get over it. Um, so <laughs> the thrash and throw, and of course the Carno. When I saw that thing, I was like, wow, the little the little gimmick, um, the entire sculpt, like it, it completely blows Kenner away from me. The other, um, the other two Carnos I thought were really ugly, and I've <laughs> I've considered selling them because you know they're worth a bit of money, but I've never particularly liked them. I just thought I'd better have the the entire collection. Sure. So the Carno, the Thrash and Throw, um, the little Raptors. I, I love just about every mold um, from each Raptor, and I've just unboxed the Indo Raptor today, and man that's another favorite i i just really hard to choose because i love them all i love the steg i love the trike it's like it's really difficult for me and obviously there's still a lot more to you know filter in i still need the moser i still need um extreme chomping stuff like that but so far i'm just i'm happy with everything i see yeah absolutely yeah. matt um i can try to say for both what i like and don't like so I know they're only eight bucks, but the attack packs are a little disappointing. I I only have unboxed the legacy pack, so I got the Dilophosaurus and the Raptor. Maybe because I'm spoiled with the other Raptors, but I think this Raptor it's 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 okay. I mean, it's eight dollars, so but it's not my favorite. And the Dilophosaurus looks really good, but I don't know. It's just more kind of like a Popo type situation rather than like a Jurassic Park dinosaur toy. Um. Moving up, the story pack type deals like the rap, the jumping raptors, those are awesome. The legacy stuff for me is great, even though I haven't unboxed it. Besides this um, Lost World Raptor, which is my favorite, which I've obviously said. Um, I haven't unboxed the action attacks yet, but I'm sure I'm going to like them. Um, the roar bores, some of them don't stand, which suck, but the detail's awesome, and I love electronic dinosaurs, and uh, I'm th- sure kids will love them. Mm-hmm. And. I don't know. I, I, I did previously say I love the Thrash and Throw, and I think it's it's possibly the greatest T-Rex, but something just... Maybe because I hyped it up so much myself personally, I like other products more, including the, the possible Super Colossal, but I think almost everything that they've put out is definitely a purchase and either perfect for kids or for collectors or both. So honestly, I think... Nothing. Nothing here is a true dud. Like say yeah, the exactly. the uh, Bash and Biter T Rex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and even um, I didn't mention the Colossal, but it's actually hard to choose between those two because at least with the Colossal, you know, you don't have the seam lines, but then of course you don't have um, you know, well, you've got the gimmick, you've got the the gulper gimmick, but um, I don't have the electronic I version. Have, I, I speaking of, I have to do a roar. I'm sorry. That's my favorite one too. That was perfect cue. This this uh, I love nice. it. So, uh, for me, I, I mean, it's interesting you you bring up disappointing aspects of the line, which there really aren't many. But uh, I kind of got to agree with you on the attack pack. Some of them, like the the raptors in particular, don't look that great. Um, especially when you you look at the other raptors that are in this line. Uh, I haven't opened the I have the Dilophosaurus and the Gallimimus. Those are the only two that I purchased. And I guess if you want to throw in the Dimorphodon that comes with the uh, the Jeep mm-hmm. with the launching net, uh, I guess I have three of them. Uh, but I mean, other than that, I can't really off the top of my head think of anything that is uh, that I can really say anything negative about. Um, for standout products, uh, Sam mentioned how awesome the T Rex looks, and 
it, it doesn't matter which T-Rex you go with, whether it's the Extreme Chompin, which is a little bit smaller, or the Thrash and Throw, which is uh, more in scale with the rest of the line, 118 scale, or the uh, Super Colossal T-Rex. I mean, they all look stunning, even though you have some of the joints there with the smaller ones. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter. You can't go wrong with it, any three of them, in my opinion. Uh, they all look fantastic. They all have the same terrific head sculpt. Uh, the paint is very comparable on the three. Um, so that is pretty awesome. No matter what you're willing to spend for a T-Rex, you're going to get a good T-Rex. I, I love that. Uh, one figure that's come to mind that I actually refuse to buy is that god-awful green raptor with like the broken ah. arm. That's the one thing. I looked at it and I'm like, no, I'm, I wouldn't pay anything for that. <laughs> <laughs> the Cyclops remake. That's the dud to me. Um, I didn't, although I didn't buy the Dilophosaurus either because something's off about that. I'm not a huge fan and um, the eyes were like misprinted. I couldn't find a better one. I think there was only one in my store. So it's that Green Raptor and the Dilophosaurus. I think I'm going to wait for the one uh, to be released with like the spinning action, just like the old Kenner one. But yeah, yeah. what do you guys think of that Green Raptor? Oh, no. Uh-uh. It's terrible. Did you buy it? I don't it? like it. No. I, I I know what they're I know what they're going for. They're going for the Cyclops, but mm -hmm. the cool thing about the Cyclops was that it had that action feature where you move the tail, then it, it moved the head. But like with these legacy guys, they don't have or not sorry, I'm sorry, the attack packs, mm -hmm. they don't have an action feature. They just have articulation. But I will say Victoria said about the Dimorphodon and the Gallimimus attack pack. I have the Gallimimus out in my hands. I'll open up the Dimorphodon, but the Gallimimus is really cool for eight bucks, and it's 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 actually really wide stanced, and it still stands, so that's really cool. So until we get the little one that has the button push, I think a Gallops or some some crap for the Walmart w version. Um, this is an okay one for eight bucks, and I think the Dimorphodon for eight bucks is cool too. But some of them, like the Raptors, look like garbage. The great thing about this galley is, is once again, there's a galley ripped right out of the, the first movie. It yeah. does look it's, just like one. I'm so impressed. Even even yeah. the electronic Kenner one looks so bizarre. I mean, you look at it. No, look at it's, it's, it looks nothing like a galley. I know. I know. I was actually going to say that. So you took the words right in my mouth. I find it hilarious that that thing goes for like two hundred, four hundred dollars, and it's just. It, honestly, I love Kenner, but that that toy's garbage. Why do you oh, think I sold my that all and Baryonyx and I I should sell them because I just I no. have them just because you know yeah for sure I sold my when I found or I saw the Rorivores Baryonyx I sold all my Baryonyx Kenners because they don't look like a Baryonyx and the one from the film is coming out and it's actually from the film so why would I own the inferior versions never never settle for less kids <laughs> totally no. <laughs> Never settle. Um, other standouts of the line, and I haven't opened everything yet, but uh, what I have opened, uh, I mentioned how much I love the gyrus here with Claire. I freaking love it. I'm going to buy another one. It, it's just incredible. Uh, I, I love how you can fit the two figures in there very comfortably and how it is, actually is a gyrus here. It stays balanced. Uh, it has the big crack, which I'm not a huge fan of, but the good thing is that if you orient it with the crack facing oh. on the bottom, it actually kind of helps to keep it uh, upright so it doesn't spin around. Um, also the, the, the legacy Jeep. I love the legacy Jeep. I had to buy a second one because I liked it so much. Uh, the human figures, uh, I haven't bought the, the Jurassic world legacy figures yet, but I, or Jurassic world figures, but I have bought the legacy figures and I'm really enamored with them. Uh, of course I mentioned the battle damage line to me. That's kind of like a surprise, uh, part of the line. Cause when I saw photos of them online, I thought these look terrible, but when I actually saw them in person and especially again, the Stiggy Moloch in blue, they look incredible. Um, and I have the other ones too. There's a Triceratops, there's a Hererosaurus. Yeah, that's the one I wanted. Uh, and there is the, uh, what's the other one? The Pachycephalosaurus? Yeah, so I have those, uh, those three for the battle damage line and, or those five for the battle damage line. Uh, I haven't yet opened, uh, the Stegosaurus or the Carnotaurus. I'll probably get to that in the coming week. Um, but just side note, have you guys noticed that there's kind of like two paint variations of the Carnotaurus? Really? Mm, no, I mean, I have two as well. Maybe I just haven't looked at them hard enough, but I will have a look in the daylight, I think. What are the differences? So, well, one of them has um, like a harsher line between the red and the white on the belly. Mm. And uh, that one, uh, I, I kind of liked how it had more red on it. But the thing is, the, the arm is white, right? The arms are white. Yeah. So 
uh, when you, when you see that one, the arms really stand out as kind of being obvious. Like there's just like these white arms there. Uh, the other version has more, uh, more of a gradient, more blending done between the white and the red. So there's a little bit less red on the torso, but it's a little more natural looking and, uh, the arms don't stick out quite as much. Like they're, you don't see them because there's a better gradient to the figure. And that's the one I ended up buying because I thought it looked better. Do you guys know what I've just noticed? You're saying that now one side of my car, no, the one I'm holding in my hand, um, the gradient sort of fades out over its arm, you know, and into the red. On the other side, it's blatantly obvious the white comes under the arm. And so the white arm just sticks out. <laughs> hmm. So I've got half and half. Funny you should say that. I, I wonder if I should check my boxed one. Oh, wow. It'll probably be <laughs> Uh-oh. 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 Blimey. Blimey, cool, blimey. <laughs> So I also have the Mosasaur, which looks incredible. Sam, you were unboxing the uh, Indoraptor earlier. Oh, man. And um, yeah, that looks really cool, too. Uh, I haven't unboxed either one of them yet, but uh, I'm really eager to, especially that Mosasaur. It's just huge. And uh, what else? Uh, I mean, everything's looking pretty good. I'm not, I'm honestly not as impressed with the Legacy, uh, di the $10 dinosaurs, as much as I am the Battle Damage ones from Walmart. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully with wave two, you know, they'll, they'll get better. Um, but I mean, by and large, all of this product is, is looking really good. And, uh, it, it's really hard for me to pick a favorite. I mean, all the T-Rexes look good. The Jeep Wrangler looks great. Um, a Mosasaur, Indoraptor, the, uh, Stegosaurus, Carnotaurus, all that looks fantastic. And, uh, I mean, there, there's still a lot more to come. There's still a lot more that I haven't yet picked up from this initial batch. I haven't gotten a bunch of the vehicles. So uh, I guess, you know, we'll, we'll have to talk later on, you know, see how this whole line pans out. And, uh, you know, we'll, well, this is this will be our first part where we talk about toy hunting and our initial impressions. And then maybe once the line is over, whenever that is, you know, we can come back and talk again about, uh, you know, what else came out since this time and uh, what our, our overall impressions have been. So that'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's fantastic that it's hard to choose a favorite because that means that they've really nailed just about everything. Oh, yeah. Yes, true. That is what, and and I'm just looking at it now. I'm like, I, I really cannot choose. I, I love them. You know, I love, absolutely adore like 90% of the line. <laughs> but honestly, though, if you get, if you had like, you know, <laughs> if you held a gun to my head, I'd pick the Lost World Raptor. So that's what, I, I, for now. You love that Raptor. <laughs> I, I I don't know, man. This is pretty cool. <laughs> the Lost World Raptor? Yeah. yeah I, and you know, my favorite dinosaur, um, real dinosaur is a T-Rex and Jurassic Park Canon is an Indominus Rex. But this just, ah, this Raptor is so cool. So, yours jumps higher. Yo, well, I, maybe it's my technique. I try to teach you guys how to use these things. <laughs> Ours don't work like maybe that. Yours I, is special. Maybe I, I'm just I a big man it. with big hands, strong. <laughs> oh God. Work. Like if if you give it, you know, if you try and release it too fast, it just falls over. Um. You got. Yeah. I can yeah. try it right on my bedside table. Oh no. What was that? Nah, it, it just sort of falls forward. I'll get it. I just need more practice. But yeah, funny you should say that because that's the one toy I constantly go back and pick up and look at. Because oh, I same look here. at that <laughs> head sculpt from any angle. I'm just like, wow, that is a Lost World Raptor. That is the scene where, you know, he's he's looking, he's staring down Kelly. That's that's the eyes right there. Yeah, this is just a trifecta of articulation, sculpt, and playability for kids. So, totally. Absolutely. Amazing. I'm going to try mine. I'm going to try okay. mine. Here it goes. Oh, it fell over. I'm going to try it again. All right, here, all right, let's try mine. Let's see how far mine goes. I should take a video of this. Here we go. Ready? Oh, that was good. <laughs> no, mine's still falling. Man. Uh, you guys stink. <laughs> I think mine's, I don't know, I think yours is just special because mine doesn't jump like yours does. Yeah, yeah I, I think guess I'm need, very special. What can I say? No, I yeah. give up. <laughs> here we are. So, um, very nice. Playing with toys. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's why we're here. <laughs> oh, you ain't going to be So, I'd like to go over two polls that I ran on Twitter uh, over the last uh, day or so. Uh, first one was uh, What is your favorite Mattel Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom line? And uh, it looks like uh, there were three options. I had the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which is the main line. I also had Legacy Collection. 
And then I also had battle damage as an option. Uh, so, of course, Legacy Collection in the U.S. being the Target exclusive and Battle Damage being the Walmart exclusive. So this poll got 112 votes and uh, 5% said they liked Battle Damage. So not too many. Mm-hmm. Uh, 38% said that Legacy Collection was their favorite. Uh, but 57% said that the main Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom line was their ultimate favorite. So it looks like most people are favoring the main line at this point. Yeah, I'm just thinking uh, it'd probably have to be the main line for me too because that counts well. It counts the big thrash and throw and the colossal, doesn't it? Oh yeah, there's so much more stuff in the main line. There's so much more. Like I hate to choose, but I, I guess I'd have to say the main line just for now. But the legacy is so cool. Yeah, I was part of the 38 percent that voted for the legacy because of this raptor, <laughs> and uh, the, yeah. I, I, <laughs> that raptor. I have. I have faith for the future. I mean, the humans, we only have like three right now, then a fourth one's coming, I hopefully in June, and this Jeep is great. So, I don't know. It, they're not wrong for voting the f- regular line, which is great, but mm-hmm. I, I just, I think I voted the Legacy, because also, I will talk about this in my live stream probably, that t- $10 Pteranodon has the exact same head and face as the Jurassic Park three Pteranodon, and I'm looking at I oh, look yeah. I looked at that thing and I crapped my pants. Yeah, I'm looking like, at it oh my right God. now for something and, so small yeah. and it is so freaking detailed. It's, look at the eyes, it's man. It's so it's so small. It's so small, and it looks just like a little like they took it from the movie and shrank it down, like Honey I Shrunk the Kids type of deal, and they, and it's just like right in your hands. It's like, like they you took- know the scene where where he turns around and just stares at you. That's it. Yep, that's exact. It's just the exact same Pteranodon. It's like holy crap. I'm holding it right now. I'm just, I'm just pressing. So that's why I voted for the legacy because this raptor, and then the dress part three raptors coming. I don't know why they don't like the original raptors, but maybe next year they'll make them, and I'll buy three. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm in love. <laughs> <laughs> He's smitten. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, it's too hard for me to choose. Like a mixture of the legacy and the main line. Um, it's too hard. Vicky, which one did you like? Um, you know, initially I was thinking Legacy because those are the first toys that I really purchased, uh, I would say. Uh, and I love the Jeep. I love the human figures. And I love the uh, the little T-Rex, the Extreme Shop of T-Rex. Um, but again, I, I'm not as taken with the, uh, the smaller dinosaurs mm-hmm. in the line yet. And I know there's those two really big multi-packs that have a ton of uh, figures or dinosaurs in them. I still haven't acquired those. Um, but right now, the, the breadth of the line seems to be with uh, the main uh, the main line, the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom line. So uh, I didn't vote in the poll myself. <laughs> this is my own poll. I didn't want to skew it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I would have to say right now, it's, it's probably the Fallen Kingdom line, like the main line. Gotcha. Yeah. So the other poll that I ran... Uh, was, uh, what is your favorite Mattel Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom assortment? And uh, the options were Attack Pack, Story Packs, Roar Vores, and Action Attack. Mm. Of course, Attack Pack being the $8 figures, Story Packs being the figures that come packed with uh, either the Gyrosphere in Claire's case, or Raptor Blue in Owen's case, the Roar Vores, which are the $15 electronic dinos, and the Action Attack, which are the uh, $20 dinos, Unfortunately, I didn't have the option of putting more than four choices. Otherwise, I would have thrown more in there. Um, so 8% say that they like the attack pack, which, uh, as we've noted, uh, it's probably the more problematic assortment as far as um, the actual issues with the, the figures. Uh, 19% said story packs. 36% said the roar of wars. But 37% said action attack so just barely over the roar of wars uh and of course those are like the stegosaurus and the carnotaurus and that one got 36 votes total um so yeah it seems like uh right now people are saying the roar of wars and the action attacks those are the two uh assortments to go to what do you guys think? i was gonna say i always get confused the roar of wars isn't that the steg and the carno those are the electronic, like the Triceratops, oh, yeah. the uh, Allosaurus. So the Roar of Wars, I actually, I've bought the Allosaurus. That's the only one I haven't taken out of the pack. I love the Baryonyx and the Trike. I absolutely love them. I didn't buy the Metriacanthosaurus because I thought he is ugly. He's, <laughs> even though he's still tall, <laughs> he I'm like, ugly. no, yes. I don't, I don't want to buy him. What do you guys think of him? The Metriacanthosaurus, which one are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The- um, I bought him. <laughs> 
I don't know. We 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 haven't had a yeah. Hell yeah. I bought, I bought all that crap. Um, <laughs> I uh, I bought him because we didn't have uh, we never had one before that, that species. So yeah. my one friend uh, Joey's all like, "Oh my god, be new species! I gotta get this monolophosaurus. It looks so good. Oh my god, this new species of this attack pack, blah blah blah, Protoceratops. Like, yeah, okay, sure, yeah, species. <laughs> Wee. Um, but I got it because you know, electronic dinosaur. My future kid will love it, whatever, blah, blah. <laughs> um, yeah, I know we only have two of the uh, action attacks, you know, the Stegosaurus and the Carnotaurus, but uh, if I were to pick just one assortment, I'd probably say that's the strongest uh, assortment so far. I picked the story pack, and I'm going to let you have one guess why. The Raptor. Hey, mate, you got it, you, you got uh, it, you got oh it, mate. Gosh. Send you a high five and a little hug. It's a little raptor that jumps. The... <laughs> that's why I picked it. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's why I bought Owen, because <laughs> of blue. That blue, looks, that, that's a great blue. Even though it's repainted, I'll, I'll get that too. So I haven't, mm. yeah, haven't, haven't unboxed him and the Allosaurus, because I'm still not sure about the Allosaurus. But if I had to pick, you know, the, the four favorites, it's Trike, Baryonyx, Steg, Kano. I can't pick between those two lines because I like, you know, a couple of each or the two of the one line. <laughs> it's too hard, man. I'm indecisive enough as it is. And I, I just can never pick favorites. It, it's oh. really hard to be. Yeah, same here. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, music, no, like, movies, yeah. toys. I, it Almost yeah. impossible. So do you guys have any final thoughts on the Jurassic World uh, Fallen Kingdom line you'd like to talk about? I just want to say thank you, Mattel. And God bless you, Matt, for making this Aww. possible. This is just like, oh, out of this world. I, I just, I'm amazed. I'm just blown away. And I'm so happy that I get to share this with um, with you two of all people. Like, I can't believe I'm I'm live talking to you. It's just, it's a dream come true, guys. It's really cool. Aw. Yeah, very touch. Well, we're happy to have you. I, happy to have you both on the show. It's, it's always a pleasure. And, uh, you know, we'll have to do this more often. Totally. Oh, hell yeah. All right, so Matt, if people were looking for you online, I'm sure most of them already know where to find you. But um, w- where can they look you up? Um, yeah, so you can just go search my name, uh, Matt Brando. So I'm on YouTube, um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, all that good stuff. And you can send me all your people are sending me photos of all their dress park stuff and tag me on Instagram, so you guys can do that. Um, I want to say. Thank you to Mattel for listening to us. Um, thank you for everyone that supports, like, Victoria, myself, um, everyone, even in the Dress Park community, whether you do art, like Sam, um, everyone in our community has a voice, and we all came together and we all did this, and Mattel is not stupid, and they listen to us and for a majority of the stuff. I still want to see some rubber T-Rexes, but... Yeah. but for the for the majority of the part uh the, they did their part so far this is just you know not even year one is completed yet like and we already are amazed so i can't i can't wait to see what the future holds and please keep buying their stuff because you need to vote with your wallet and um you need to really show that we're we are here and we are huge. Yeah. We are huge. Jurassic World is one of the biggest um, grossing films of all time, and just because you know Hasbro sales were garbage, that's because we voted with our wallets. Now we have to really spend the money, and so far we are. So just keep it up, guys, and don't be lax a daisy. And uh, keep, yeah, we 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 did it. <laughs> we did. Good words. And Sam, if uh, anyone wants to look you up online, where should they go? Oh, you guys know I'm uh, but a humble Instagrammer. <laughs> You'll find me. I'm um, Raptor Queen eighty nine on Instagram. Um, sometimes I'm on Facebook. <laughs> I, I'm yet to make a you know a proper YouTube channel, but who knows? Maybe one day. I still want to do those reviews for you, Vicky. So we'll just I'll just see how I go. Awesome. You said you said Raptor King ninety eight. All right, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Raptor Queen. Raptor Queen. Is that better. Love it. <laughs> Uh, uh, Raptor King is Nick. Times he is. Yeah. Well, he's car. He's a carnotaur. Oh, that's the that's the other Nick. <laughs> oh, you're talking about your, oh the hubby. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what? Who's Carnotaur King? J- that's Nick, the JP Carnotaur. I thought that's who you're talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, he couldn't join us because he was sick, unfortunately. Yeah, everybody's getting the flu, man. Thank God I had to knock on uh, this fake particle board wood. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So wonderful. Uh, I mean, both of you do fantastic work in your own re- respective um, areas of interest. Toy type. Ugh, good gosh. I got tongue twisted. Your toy. What am I thinking? It's already almost midnight here, too. Oh, my toy gramming. No, I haven't toy done a lot gramming. of art lately. But- I just you know with getting married and everything i just haven't had the time and i haven't been inspired um so hopefully there will be art on the horizon but at the moment i'm just having fun with these toys so (laughs) i'm not a big deal but i'm just you know cheering you two on it's great i love you guys thank you we love you too yeah yeah Yeah. so both of you do fantastic work in your own here we go again (laughs) (laughs) it's too late (laughs) i knew i shouldn't be drinking a beer while i was doing this Mm-hmm. Love. Put that in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I might throw it at the very beginning or something. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, that's great. Yeah, both of you guys are fantastic in your. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh, funny, I lived closer. Could you imagine it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Come to America. Let's all move to San Diego. <laughs> yes. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, both of you guys We'd have are... To, we, we, we would have to fight over... Not to cut you off. We would have to fight over the last thrash and throw or something. <laughs> I've already got two, don't you worry. <laughs> well, I, I want three, so... Oh, God. <laughs> I don't even have one yet. Dang. Oh. I'm, I'm trying to pace myself. I mean, I already bought a... Sh- uh, uh, probably saying I shouldn't say on, on a podcast. I already bought a lot of stuff, but... <laughs> a crap ton. Yeah, I already bought a crap yeah. ton of stuff, but I'm still trying to pace myself because there's a lot that I don't have. See, I tried that. It didn't work. The first day, I'm not kidding you, like I had wedding gifts and stuff and vouchers. I spent $351. Mmm, nice. That's nice. just, that's insane. Nice. I think mine Mine was, um, mm, let's see here. I saw yours, Matt, 271 Some... No, 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 no. That was just one day. Um, oh my god! Okay. Day one was like thirty. That was the blast vehicle, I think. No, that was, yeah, it was probably thirty. And then day two is the RC. That was about thirty thirty five. And then the target day that was two seventy one. But I had a fifty dollar. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the, the seventh was the Saturday. I got the thrash and throw, um, the legacy Jeep and Alan Grant. But I had gift cards, so that was zero dollars. But uh, then nice. fri- Friday was two seventy one, and then I have like a forty dollar gift card. So keep doing the math, people. If you're still listening, if this is going to make the final yeah, cut, yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, and then it probably won't, but it's it's ridiculous. Okay, and then <laughs> we should include it because it's so funny. And then Sunday night was like a uh, hundred and thirty or some shit. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, it was it was probably more than everyone else. <laughs> um. Yeah, I I told you guys I had a Moses sword to return, and I went to Target the other day to return it, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to return it, and then that's that. But they ended up, I don't know why, like, I I guess I had paid, like, partly in store credit and partly in cash, or on on my card, and Mm -hmm. um, so they're they're like, oh, we're going to give you store credit, I'm like, fine, whatever. But then I got to the toy aisle, and I saw that stuff, and I'm like, wait, I have store credit, so if I use it, it's kind of like I'm not paying Mm. anything for it. So that's how I ended up with (laughs) the Pteranodon and the Carnotaurus. Good choices. Hey guys, you know I see it as an investment anyway, especially with these toys. Um, quick question, and I'll throw this in the show. Quick question, uh, just curious: Are you guys going to keep the boxes to your toys? Uh, right now I have kept them all, although you know I've ripped the bubble off and a few of them are destroyed. But I've kept them all except for I think the thrash and throw. I ripped that as I was opening it, so it's sort of ruined. The super colossal, I have the box in there, but I'm thinking. What's the point? I mean, yes, if I on sell them, but I don't feel like I'm going to sell these toys. So I don't really see the point at the moment. Matt, I think you, you probably keep your boxes. You know, you know what? That you are correct in your assumption. However, um, space is getting limited. <laughs> and um, you know what? I'm kind of with Sam. I, I don't know. I don't see myself selling these things. And if these are for my future kids, what the hell do I need the boxes for anyway? So, you know, like, mm-hmm. I, I don't no. know. I, I, I'll keep a couple boxes, like my favorites. I'll keep like a thrash and throw box. It's, Sam, can you, dis- I, I I know you already, I already asked you, but I, I talked to so many people about so many things. Can you disassemble the super colossal? Like I the tried. T- I couldn't. Oh, shoot. Um, Cause I would love to actually 
somehow keep that box because the box is, looks like a Kenner box. But you need two. <laughs> <laughs> or how about this? You, you buy the regular thr- you, the, the regular colossal. You keep that in the box, and then you open your battle damage. I will for sure throw out boxes of the of the Roarvors. Shut up, Allosaurus. Um, because you can't you can't disassemble the tails, and you can't fit them back in the box. So those are definitely goes. But I might keep like some of the legacy ones. But overall, I think maybe eighty percent of the boxes I'm going to toss out. Which I like a year ago or something was like, no, keep the boxes. They're boxes. They're boxes. They're so cool. But now I'm just like, nah. I I, I want to like not own so much stuff. <laughs> it can be bad. I, I don't want to say never. You know, never yeah. say never. But I don't think we're going to get. Kenner quality boxes again, like boxes that are worth keeping. I only I, held on to the um, the Hasbro crap because I knew I was going to want to sell it. Same. And so, yeah, and then I sold them and chucked them back in the box. But these ones, yeah, I just, nah. I mean, they're great. The packaging is great, but it's just taking up so much room. There is just no point in having it. Mm-hmm. Right. It is. Uh, I still have a couple of my original Kenner boxes from 93 and only, I mean, I was eight years old at the time, but I was, uh, even then I was very particular about my, my toys and I wanted to make sure I had uh, the boxes for those big dinos. But uh, for this line, I don't think I'm going to, yeah. I think I'm going to toss everything. I mean, that's what I've been doing so far uh, with the legacy stuff and the other items that I've reviewed lately. Uh, I've been just tossing the boxes. I mean, uh, I, I do agree. The packaging looks, looks quite great. Uh, I really enjoy the aesthetic uh, with the volcano and the eruptions, but uh, the only packaging I think I'm going to keep is if I get any duplicates. Uh, I think I might just keep those in the boxes, but uh, I mean, I, I got to open everything. I oh, mean, that, yeah. that's, that's what it's all about is enjoying it and having fun with it. So, uh, and, oh, and as yeah. you guys know, I don't just collect Jurassic. I have a big Star Wars collection too. Um, so space is a, is a huge issue for me. So, uh, yeah, I think most of those boxes are going to go. Yeah, definitely. I'm lucky in that respect that I only am really focusing on Jurassic. That's all I'm collecting, so it's fine for me. But for you guys, you know, Brandon, you've got your, you know, WWE, and, and Vicky, you've got your your Star Wars and DC and everything else. So, yeah. Totally. So, yeah, both of you guys do incredible work. I implore anybody listening to check you out online and uh thanks again for being on the show it's been a pleasure having you as guests yet again and i definitely hope that uh we can do this in the future you are most welcome it's been awesome heck yeah i love you guys you're the best yay wait wait let's do let's quickly just do a dinosaur victory roll for mattel uh, like for, with our toys or with our mouths? <laughs> with our toys. <laughs> Unless okay. you want to. Hold, hold on. I'll have to have the Kenner Red Rex because that's the only thing I've opened. Right. It's electronic. I'm re- I have those super claws, so it'll be short, but I'm ready. All right. Three, two, two one. one. Go. There's a, that's the one I wanted. Uh, so beautiful. I want to kiss this thing so every day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> you probably tuck it into bed at night. How? It's still in the box. So beautiful. So beautiful. You get so snuggled pretty. with it. It's so big. What is wrong with us? Everything. <laughs> Before I go, it's- everyone has something weird w- with them. You know, everyone. Everyone's got that little niche that they like in life. Yeah, and that's why we're all here talking to each other. Chaos theory. Ah, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> So yeah, it's been a blast. Uh, we're all excited about the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom toy line from Mattel. And uh, I think this is going to be a really fun ride. Really looking forward to seeing how things pan out over the next uh, number of months, over the next several waves, and who knows, maybe even number of years. Yes. Yay. Well, that'll do it for the 23rd episode of the Cantina Chatter podcast. Once again, I'd like to thank my friends, Matt Brando and Sam, Raptor Queen 89 for chatting with me about Mattel's Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom toy line. Be sure to check their brilliant workout online. I will throw some links down in the show notes. As always, please be sure to subscribe to Victoria's Cantina and the Cantina Chatter podcast wherever podcasts are available. Of course, if you've enjoyed the show, giving Cantina Chatter positive and five-star reviews is always helpful in supporting the podcast. Be sure to follow Victoria's Cantina on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you for tuning in to the Cantina Chatter podcast. Until next time, bye-bye.